Welcome to day 18 of my A4R Advent calendar. In this series of videos I show you in 24 days how to program the A4R APIP microcontroller. And here you can see a small setup. I have a 7 segment display and a button. And each time I'm pressing the button, I will increment the value of my 7 segment display. But what happens if I disconnect my microcontroller from the power? Well, the 7 segment display went off and if I plug it back in again, it will start again on zero. But sometimes it is important to save process data, like for example the state of the segment display somewhere. And this is possible with A4 microcontrollers by using the internal EEPROM memory. So today I want to show you how to read and write to the EEPROM memory of the Atmega A4 or 8-bit microcontroller. So let's take a look at the datasheet of the controller. We can see here we have a variable amount of um, EEPROM memory available. So we have two. Um, so on my Atmega 88 microcontroller, I should have 512, kilo, uh, 512 bytes EEPROM. EEPROM stands for Electronically Erasable Programmable Read Only Memory. So basically, it's read only memory but you can erase it and program it electrically and this way you can write it multiple times. Okay, and here in the A4R datasheet we have a section of A4R memories and here we have an EEPROM data memory section where everything is described and a little bit down here we should find the registers to access the EEPROM. So basically we have three registers. We have a 60-bit register, a 16-bit register, the EEPROM address register. And in this register we can write the address of the EEPROM in which we are interested in. Then we have the EEPROM data register. So if we want to read data after the read operation, the data will be in this register. And if we are doing a write operation, we first have to write in a value into this register and then it will be written out to the address which is set in the address register. And to control everything we have this EEPROM control register. So important fields here are bit um, yeah, bit 0. So this is the EEPROM read enable. So if you want to do a read transaction we have to set this bit here. Then the EEPROM write enable is a little bit used as, um, so we, if we want to write, we have to set this bit, but this bit also has to be polled to check if there are any actions pending on the EEPROM. So before we are doing a read or a write, we first check if this bit here is zero. And the last bit we need for um, reading and write, for writing is this EEPROM master write enable bit. So if we want to write something, we have to set this bit and then in a second attempt we have to set this bit here and this will trigger the write operation. Okay, so here I, so let's go into my A4 advanced calendars folder and I've created a folder I called 18. I will rename it to 18 e from later. And in here we have a main function. And here we have the code of the program we can see running right now here. And now I want to add something. So first I want to read from EEPROM to get counter value. And to read first thing I have to do is I have to check if there is an action pending on the EEPROM. And I can do this by reading the e, e control register and check if the EEPE bit is set. And as long as this bit is set, I will stay in this endless loop here. When the EEPROM um, operation is done, we can set the address. And let's define an address. So define EEPROM address and I will set the address to 2. So we will store the counter variable at EEPROM address 2 here. So I will set this address to EEPROM address here, okay. Then I have to trigger the read operation, therefore I will set the um, EEPROM read enable bit, so one shifted by EEPROM 
read enable and the read operation is quite fast so after this command is done the read operation is done too and I can set my counter variable to ee or ee data register here. Okay, and now each time um, the button is pressed, I have to write the new value to the EEPROM. Value to EEPROM. So the procedure is quite similar here. So let me copy these three lines here. So the first thing we are doing is we are checking if there is an active or if there is an operation pending. Then we are setting the address, then we are setting the data we want to write, this is our counter variable. Then we are setting the um, master write enable bit, and then we can set the eprom write bit here, and this will trigger the write operation. Okay, so that's it, let me try to compile the program and then let's test it. Uh, ah, okay, I have a typo here. 942. This should be EE control register. And I think I've made the mistake down here too. Yeah, copy post error. So let's try it again. Now it looks good. So now let me flash the program. So, yes, I think I called the program segment.hex. So I can use this. I have to give it my password. Okay, now an F is displayed because by default all values of the EEPROM are set to F. And if I press the button now, I will see a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3. Now let me disconnect the power. Let's connect it back in. Hey, and we have our free bag, so it works. So this time we have accessed non volatile memory of the EEPROM, and there is one last thing I want to show you. So if you want to access the EEPROM from your A4R USB ASP programmer, for example, you can do this with A4R Dude. So let's say we want to um, we want to read the EEPROM. Then I could do something like this. Uh, okay, this was the wrong type. This is bytewise. Uh, maybe X. Yes. And here I can see the content of the EEPROM. So here at address 0 we have F we have all FFs except for address 2. And in address 2 we have our 3 standing in. Okay, so that's how to access the EEPROM on our Atmega ADAPA Mac controller. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. And I also hope I will see you tomorrow. Bye!